we begin this challenge problem with a recurrence relation. Let a0 and a1 be 1, and a sub n be the sum from i equals to 0 to n minus 1 of a sub i times a sub n minus 1 minus i minus 1. To begin with, realize that we have this very nice symmetry in the first term inside our summation, because a sub i and a sub n minus 1 minus i, well, i and n minus 1 minus i is always going to add up to n minus 1. And since we are going from i equals to 0 to in fact n minus 1, we see that we have this very prevalent strong symmetry residing inside. Now, the second part of the summation, a sub i times 1, is pretty elementary by itself, so we may think of splitting up the summation into two parts. So we can say a sub n is a sum from i equals to 0 to n minus 1 of a sub i times a sub n minus 1 minus i, minus the sum from i equals to 0 to n minus 1 of a sub i. So I'm just distributing a sub i and splitting up the summation. So just so we know what's going on, for n equals to 5, our n minus 1 is 4, so to calculate the first summation, we are multiplying by every possible a sub i and a sub n minus 1 minus i, such that i and n minus 1 minus i adds up to n minus 1 or 4. So this part would be a0, a4, 0 plus 4, a1, a3, a2, a2, then we go to a3, a1, then a4, a0, and that's it. So that's the first summation. And from that, we are taking away the second summation, which is adding up every a sub i from 0 to n minus 1. So from this, we're going to be taking away a0, a1, a2, a3, a4. So using this, for example, a sub 2 would be a0, a1 plus a1, a0 minus a0 minus a1. And using the fact that a0 and a1 are both 1, we can calculate a2 to be 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1, or 0. So we see that a sub 2 is 0, and we can continue this process using this recurrence relation to find a sub 3 to be negative 1, a sub 4 to be negative 3, and so on. Before we proceed any further, let's take this time to recognize Gabriel N, who was the very first person to correctly answer this problem last week. A huge shout out to Gabriel N. So I think we understand this recurrence relation now. Now let's actually get to the crux of the problem, which is the generating function corresponding to this sequence. So we're going to let a of x be the ordinary generating function of a sub n, which is defined to be this sum from n equals to 0 to infinity of a sub n times x to the n. And if you expand this out, you see that a of x is a0 times x to the 0 power plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed, and so on. So our a of x in our case is a sub 0 is 1, a sub 1 is 1, a sub 2 is 0, a sub 3 is negative 1, and you just continue associating each power of x with the respective coefficients. And what's quite fascinating is that we can write this in a closed form. We wish to prove that a of x is given by this formula. But wait, one interesting characteristic of this formula, I think, is that it looks like a quadratic formula. It looks like negative b plus or minus, in, in this case minus, square root of b squared minus 4, in fact we actually have 4, ac over 2a. So it looks like we are being invited to square a of x because a of x is the solution to this quadratic equation. So why don't we try squaring a of x and see what happens. So we know our a of x is this equation. So let's think about what happens when we square, when we square this a of x. Well, we're multiplying this by itself. So a naught is going to be squared. That's the only constant term. Well, what is going to be the coefficient of x? Well, the coefficient of x is going to be a0 times a1x, so a0 times a1. Then we're going to have a1x times a0, so a1 times a0. Just in case you don't see this, let's copy another one of the formulas. So when we are multiplying these two, to get the coefficient of x, you can either multiply a0 a1x, or we can multiply a1x and a0. That's where a0 a1 and a1 a0 is coming from. Let's do at least one more. So what is going to be the coefficient of x squared? 
Well, that's going to be a naught times a two x squared. So a naught a two, and hopefully you see the resemblance to something that we have already done in this video. Then we have a one x times a one x. So a one times a one. Then we have a two x squared times a naught. So we have a two times a naught. Realize this is precisely what we have done. Well, almost. We are not taking away this a naught a one. We are not taking away. Bunch of a sub i's, but this is basically the front portion, the first summation in our recurrence relation. So if you go back down by glancing at it, we have something very close to a sub two. A sub two is a not a one, a one a not. Then we have to take away a not a one, and the same reasoning applies to a sub three, which is a not a two, a one a one, a two a not minus a not a one a two. We are just we are extremely close. If we have this a naught minus a one inside our coefficient as well, we can replace the entire thing by a two and dramatically simplify the expression. How can we achieve that? Well, we're starting off with our a of x squared. From here, we want to take away a one x, a two x squared, a three x cubed. But we can achieve that by simply taking away a of x, because when we take away a of x. We're going to be taking away a naught, a one x, a two x squared, and so on. So we're taking care of this a one, a two, a three, and so on. We still gotta take away a naught x, a one x squared, a two x cubed. Dot dot dot. Well, that's easy as well. We simply take away x times a of x because x times a of x is going to take away a naught x. So we're taking away another a naught. A one x squared, a two x cubed, just as we desire, and maybe now you see the pattern. Then we take away x squared a of x, then we take away x cubed a of x, and x to the fourth a of x, and we keep on subtracting these a of x times the powers of x in order to ensure that for every coefficient we have exactly the form of the recurrence relation. So by the end of this. We're going to have a naught squared minus a naught, which is zero because a naught is one, so this thing goes away. But we're going to have a two times x because this entire thing is going to become a two. Then we are going to have a three x squared, a four x cubed, and so on. And we see that this thing, in turn, is a of x minus a naught minus a one x all divided by x because from a of x, this is a of x. We are taking away a naught and a one x, then dividing the rest of the generating function by x, and we clearly see that these two expressions are equivalent. Now, from here, we have this nice equality relating two expressions that are in terms of a of x. But the first expression, I think, can be simplified a little bit more. So the first one is a of x squared, and realize that this second part, this tail. Is actually an infinite geometric series with the first term of a of x and the common ratio of x. So we are taking away an infinite geometric series with the first term a of x and the common ratio of just x. So a over one minus r. And from here, it's a routine manipulation to rearrange this quadratic in a of x in standard form and apply the quadratic formula. We can replace a naught and a one by one. And when we rearrange it, I'm not going to bore you with something that's very elementary. We get x times one minus x times a of x squared. Then we have a minus a of x. Then we end with one minus x squared. And this thing should be zero. You can obtain this by multiplying both sides of this equation by x times one minus x if you're interested. Now, if we go all the way back up to our quadratic formula, here, and we quickly see that when we apply negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus four ac over two a, we get our desired equation. There is one other t. You may ask, why are we taking the minus sign instead of plus? Well, because we are looking at the ordinary generating function, we want to make sure that when we take the limit as x goes to zero, our a of x approaches a naught, because we want the behavior of a of x near zero to essentially be a naught plus a one x plus a two x squared plus a three x cubed. So as x goes to zero, we want all of these to go away. So we want to be left with a naught. So we want to choose the sign such that the limit. Such that when x goes to zero, our a of x goes to one, and clearly when we have plus sign, 
the top is going to go to 2 as x goes to 0 and the bottom is going to go to 0 and that is not going to be defined. Whereas if we choose the minus sign, this entire thing is going to go to 1. You can either prove it using L'Hopital's formula or by considering the Taylor expansion of square root of 1 minus u and expanding out a few terms. Anyway, we have come to the conclusion that our a of x is given by this generating function, this closed form of the generating function, so we are done.